So today we are going to discuss the second lecture of the topic one multi-component distillation. So earlier we have discussed about the concept of the multi-component distillation and what are the uh, designing methods for the distillation and then how we can develop the equilibrium data. So today we are going to discuss the lecture 2 of the topic 1 that is a multi-component distillation. Earlier we have discussed the concept of multi-component distillation, the designing method for the multi-component distillation, how to develop the equilibrium data, what is the meaning of vapor liquid equilibrium, how the graphical method to calculate the vapor liquid equilibrium and what is the meaning of key components and what are the other components apart from the key components. So in this one, now let us look about the first and a very important and a basic concept of the distillation that is a relative volatility. We have earlier gone through the concept of relative volatility. So the definition of the relative volatility is very much similar to the binary system that we have discussed. So it is related with some uh, uh, values the volatility of one component are going to compare with the second component. So, but in the multi-component system, we have to fix the num the name and the type or uh, the number of components that we are going to use for the comparison of other components. So, that is the important thing how to calculate the alpha because they are multi-components. So, that's why we have taken a very simple concept that the relative component is always taken with respect to the heavy components. So alpha can be taken out for any component i8. It can be taken at the k value of the i8 component divided by the k value of the heavy key. So this is a simple definition, simple concept for the relative volatility to calculate it. In this one, this is a very important thing why we are going to use the relative volatility because the k value that is a vapor liquid distribution coefficient, it is a very strong function of the temperature as compared to the alpha value. So it is more sensitive, k value is more sensitive than the alpha value. So using the alpha value is gives much more accurate results as compared to the k value and the k value components have the uh, one simple relationship because of this heavy key component concept. So any any alpha, any key, or uh, any components that is lighter than the heavy key, they have always the alpha value is greater than 1 because this k value is always greater than the heavy key values. That's why the alpha value is always greater than, than 1 and any heavier components, heavier than the heavy key, they have the k value, alpha value less than 1. So it's a thumb rule to find out, to check the correction of the uh, your data. And for the high key alpha value is always 1 because we are going to, uh, you know, find out the alpha i that is the k of the high key with respect to the k of the high key. So k high key upon k high key is equal to 1. That's why the alpha value of high key is always 1. So we are going to use this alpha value in so many calculations. For example, suppose we have a four components A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. So alpha A will be K A upon K C. For example, here C is the our heavy key. Alpha B is the K B upon K C. Alpha C is the K C upon K C. That becomes one. Alpha D is the K D upon K C. So in this way, we can find out the relative volatility of any component of A or B or C or D. Now we are going to use this concept for a very very uh, important uh, calculations that is the equilibrium calculations. So in the equilibrium we have discussed that there are two things one is the bubble point calculations and one is the dew point. If you know the bubble point and dew point we can develop the equilibrium. So first thing bubble point calculations. So in the thermodynamic aspects bubble point calculations can be you uh, can be basically find out with the uh, using this formula, this concept, summation of yi is equal to 1. We know that the, what is the meaning of bubble point. 
boil point is the temperature at which the first bubble is formed from the liquid. So anything that is going from the saturated vapor to saturated liquid to saturated vapor is being used for calculation of bubble point and the condition should be satisfied summation of yi is equal to 1. If we elaborate, if we, if we expand this yi is equal to 1, so yi can be written as ki alpha i because we know that k is equal to y upon x. So because this is the relation k is equal to y upon x that is the relationship for the vapor liquid equilibrium. So yi is equal to ki upon uh, ki into xi. This ki we have discussed about the relationship between the alpha i and for example if suppose c is the uh, high key, so we can write here alpha i is equal to ki upon kc and ki is equal to kc into alpha i. So alpha i is the general term that is why we have taken this one in the summation value and kc is the constant value we have taken out it here. So this is all this value is equal to 1. So now come to the next step kc is equal to 1 upon xi and alpha i. So this is what we can say the criteria for the bubble point calculations if there are the components where the c is the heavy key component. So this is the way to find out the bubble point temperature for the given composition of the liquid mixture. And the second thing is if we find if we want to find out the vapor composition that is in equilibrium with the liquid, so that composition can be find out using this equation. Similarly, this is a bubble point calculation. Similarly, there are dew point calculations. The thermodynamic aspect for the dew point calculation, the criteria is summation of x i is equal to 1. This is a totally different means when the first uh, drop of liquid is formed uh, from the saturated vapor, that temperature is called the dew point temperature and the calculations is based on that concept of uh, summation of x i is equal to 1. We change the x i value with the relations with the k i is equal to y i upon alpha i. So you can change this value as y upon k i is equal to 1. And again, if the, we have taken the k c as the base heavy key, so we can change this one as 1 upon k c is equal to y upon alpha i. So the k c now becomes k c is equal to summation of y upon alpha i. So this is our criteria for the dew point calculations. We have to prove this value. If this value is satisfied, then we can say that the temperature that is used for the dew point calculations is okay and we can find out the temperature of the dew point for a given composition in the saturated vapor form. So that's why it is very much useful and then we can find out the composition at that temperature uh, with the help of this formula x i is equal to some uh, this uh, y upon alpha i divided by summation of y upon alpha i. So these are the methods to find out the bubble point calculations and dew point calculations. Let us look at one example. For example, if there is a one, uh, con uh, um, we have a multi-component system of A, B, C, D, there are four components. A is the butane, normal butane, B is the normal pentane and C is the normal hexane and D is normal heptane. These are the hydrocarbons. And their composition is given here, it, it, it is 0.4, uh, 0 .4, it is 0.25 mole fraction, it is 0.2 mole fractions and the last one that is D is 0.15 mole fractions. So the mole fraction is given, we have to find out the ball point of the uh, basically this liquid as well as the composition of vapor that is in equilibrium with this liquid. So our target is to find out uh, yi and the temperature at which it will be boiled, this liquid will be boiled. So how we can do it? So we have to first find out the k value and uh, let me remind you that uh, we, are, we are taking, we are assuming that the component c is the heavy key. So heavy key is known here, uh, it is given here uh, for the four components C is, all, uh, C is taken as heavy key. And then we have all these components, so the K values is given, this K value is uh, really have the relations with the temperature. So if you want to find out the K A value, so it have the relation with the temperature. So X is, X is basically temperature in degree Celsius. So in fact K A is equal to 2.178 into 10 to the power minus 4, E minus 4 means 10 to the power minus 4 t square means that should be the temperature square plus 0.6.606 into 10 to the power minus 3 into temperature plus 3.180 into 10 to the power minus 1. Similarly, kb, kc and kd all these values are given here. You have to simply put these uh, these values in the calculator to find out the k, a, b, c, d values at any temperature. So this is basically the given value. What we can do, we are going to calculate the bubble point and this is the basic calculation for the ball point. So what is given here? ABCD is given here. Their feed values, feed values are given here. 
So we are going to assume how to solve this boil point. This is the assumptions. There are assumptions. We don't know exactly the temperature. We have to assume first value of the temperature. Then we have to go for the second value, third value, until and unless the condition for satisfaction is, should be met that we have discussed, the criteria should be met. So how we can do, because the first thing, uh, if the temperature is assumed here, the temperature we have assumed is 65 degrees Celsius. So in this temperature, we can find out the Ki value, because we know the Ka, Kb, Kc, Kd as a function of temperatures. So these values being calculated here. And then we can uh, convert this K, Ki value with the help of alpha i formula because c is here the base component and the heavy key component so we can find out the alpha i alpha i is nothing but the k i upon k c means 1.668 divided by 0.197 this case 0.624 divided by 0.197 in this case and for this case it should be a 1 and then the last one is a 0.4 so this is the basically uh, the way to find out the alpha value and then after that this is a criteria that we have to bet alpha i into x i so you have to multiply these two values means this value multiply by the x x value so 0 0.4 multiply by 8.47 that becomes 3.388 similarly the other values are calculated so after going through these calculations these four values calculations we have to sum all these values because we need to find out the sum of all these values taking the sum and then we have to make the reverse of this value so this is the reverse of this value so in this way we have to uh, reverse the value so it comes around 0.2 to 5 so what is the actual value of kc the kc value is this one this is the kc this is ka kb and this is kc at 65 degrees celsius the kc value is 0.197 but our calculated value is 0.224 to so the difference will uh, between these two values are minus 0.0280 this difference is uh, is a very uh, quite high quite large so we have to assume the next value of the temperature so for the next value temperature we have taken the 71 value and at that temperature we have find out the k value and then alpha value then multiply these two values of uh, uh, the compositions and the alpha value then sum all these values take the inverse of value kc value is is taken from uh, the calculated value and we find that the difference is zero so what we can say the temperature wall point temperature for the given composition is 71 degrees Celsius. So this is a way to find out the boil point calculation. Similarly, we can find out the dew point also. We can find out the, that is also the iterative process. We have to find out all these uh, criteria. We have to verify the criteria. When the criteria met, you have to simply stop the calculation. Similarly, if you see that, we can also find out the compositions. The composition yi, yi is nothing but the alpha i x i divided by the summation of alpha i means 3.14 divided by 4.16 if you see the y i i have the a is 7 is 0.15 mole fractions the highest value is a then the b then c then d and so on so in this way we can find out a well point now come to the um, next problem in this problem basically uh, it is given that what happened the value of b that is a pentane this pentane is recovered in the top as 90 percent 90 percent of pentane is recovered from the top and 90 percent of normal hexane that is c is recovered from the bottoms so we have to go for the material balance moles per hour composition this lay bottom top temperature and bottom temperature and the minimum stages for total reflux ratios we have to find out so now let us take this is a distillation column what is the situation pictorial and the representation of the problem the a b c d all these value <coughs> values are given the compositions are given so if we assume that there are 100 kilo moles per hour is the feed rate so we can say 40 moles of a 25 moles of b 20 moles of kilo moles of c and 15 kilo moles of d is flowing through this tower this is the flow rate of all these four components that is charged into the column <coughs> And if you look all these values flow rate is given here we have just find out the temperature at 71 degrees celsius and we have given the condition that 90 percent of b is taken from the top and 90 percent of c is taken from the bottom so basically b and c is uh, known as the key components because these two values are given for the distribution so from the question we can find out that the b and c are the key components and b is the lighter than c so b is a light key and c is the heavy key uh, and the other components is treated as, as a non-key components. So A and C, A and D are the non-key components. So A is the lighter components and D is the heavier components because A is lighter than the B. 
and D is heavier than the C. So that are the called the heavy components and light components. These two are the ultimately these two are the key components B and C. So what we want to do the top that is the saturated vapor. So saturated vapor means you have to find out the dew point temperature at the top. Bottom that is the liquid saturated liquid. Saturated liquid means bubble point temperature. The top and bottom is given here. We just go through the material balance. What the material balance constant 90 percent B and 90 percent C. So what happened? Our first assumption is that all the non-key components are 100 percent taken from top and bottom. So what it means that B is the light key. So any component that is lighter than B is 100 percent recovered from the top. So all these 40 kilo moles of A is recovered from the top. Okay. Similarly, any component that is heavier than the heavy key that is C, any component that is heavier than the C is taken from the bottom. So all the material that is 15 kilo moles are taken from the bottom. So A is 0 here and this uh, D is 0 here because these two components are not going into upper, above, top and bottom. Now come to the B and C. So B 90%, this 90% of this value. So 90% of this 25 value will be 22.5. So 22.5 kilo moles are taken from the top. The remaining value that is 2.5 is taken from the bottom. Similarly, the concept of C that is a heavy key. 90% of this value that is 18 is from the bottom. And the remaining is that is 2 is taken from the top. So in this way we can find out the A, B, C, D flow rates in the top and A, B, C, D flow rates from in the bottom. And the sum of this flow rate is 64.5 in the top and the bottom 35.5 kilomoles per hour. These two are the flow rates. This is W that is the bottom flow rate and this is D that is the top distillate flow rate of the column. Now we can find out the mole fractions simply this 40 divided by 64.5 it comes to 0.62, 22.5 divided by 64.5, 0.35 and so on. Similarly here, 0 divided by 35.5, 2.5 divided by 35.5, 18 divided by 35.5, 15 divided by 35.5. This way we can find out the mole fractions in the top and bottom uh, fractions. Then the next target is to find out the dew point temperature for this given composition of the vapor and the find out the boil point temperature for this given uh, boiling fraction of the liquid. So that is the task that you have to perform after this class. Thank you very much.